Here we're gonna look at a nice and quick little problem. So our goal is to find all integers m and n satisfying this equation. So we've got n to the fourth plus 2n cubed plus 2n squared plus 2n plus one equals m squared. So the fact that we've got an m squared on the right hand side, that means that the left hand side must also be a perfect square if indeed we have a solution here. So we wanna to try to factor the left-hand side of this equation. And notice it almost looks like a perfect square binomial, like n plus one squared or something, because we've got this coefficient of two in the middle, but we've got three coefficients of two in a row. But in fact, we can use that to our advantage by taking this two n squared and rewriting it as n squared plus n squared. But now we can do some grouping. So notice this n squared can be grouped with this n to the fourth plus two n cubed. And we can take out a greatest common factor. And furthermore, this n squared can be grouped with this two n plus one, and that easily factors. So let's maybe write this kind of trick up on. <clears throat> so now let's maybe use this trick to solve the problem. So we've got n to the fourth plus 2n cubed plus n squared, so I'll group those terms, plus n squared plus 2n plus 1 equals m squared. So that's exactly our original equation. I just regrouped a little bit. Now next, I'll factor an n squared out of this term. That'll leave me with n squared and then n squared plus 2n plus 1 plus and I'm just going to write this as 1 times n squared plus 2n plus 1 equals m squared, like that. But check it out, I've got a greatest common factor of n squared plus 2n plus 1 for both of these terms over on the left-hand side of the equation. But, you know, this is a well-known perfect square binomial of n plus one quantity squared. So we can replace each of these with just n plus one quantity squared. That allows us to factor the entire left-hand side as n plus one quantity squared times n squared plus one equals m squared. But now let's look at this. And notice that this term that I'm underlining in blue and this other term that I'm underlining in blue, these are both perfect squares. But since those are both perfect squares, that means the only remaining object in this equation must also be a perfect square. In other words, this one that I just underlined three times in red must also be a perfect square. So let's write it like this. n squared plus one must be a perfect square. But now really quickly thinking about it, n squared plus one seems like it would only be a perfect square if n was equal to zero, because it would be extremely unlikely to have perfect squares as consecutive numbers. And we'll do it with the following inequality. So let's suppose that n is not equal to zero. But now even though we're working over all integers, positive and negative integers, since n only turns out here as n squared, we only really need to consider the positive ones. That will kind of prove it for everything. So like I just said, without loss of generality, we can assume that n is bigger than or equal to one. But now let's notice that if n is bigger than or equal to one, we have n squared is strictly less than n squared plus one. Well, that's clear. We just added one to n squared. That clearly gives us something bigger, but this is strictly less than n squared plus two n plus one. And again, that's because n is bigger than or equal to one, but this n squared plus two n plus one is n plus one squared. So let's see what we've got here. We have n squared and n plus one squared, and notice that these guys are consecutive squares, but we have put our object n squared plus one directly between two consecutive squares, which means that it is not a perfect square. Unless, of course, n is equal to zero, 
So in the end, we've just shown that n must be equal to zero. But now if n equals zero, going back to our original equation, we see that m squared is equal to one, which means that m is equal to plus minus one. So those are our two solutions, zero one and zero minus one. And that's a good place to stop.